Good evening and welcome to the Scarborough Board of Education business meeting. The date is Thursday, May 16th, 2024. Can we have the attendance, please? Sure. Ms. Casalonis? Here. Mr. Kelleher? Here. Ms. Leong? Here. Ms. Lindstrom? Here. Ms. Tarpinian? Here. Mr. Pini Huff? Here. Ms. Leisure? Here. And Mr. Shumway? Here. Perfect. Thank you. Would everyone please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Right, agenda item 4.0 is approval of the meeting minutes from April 25th, 2024 business meeting and the April 29th, 2024 executive session. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes? Is so moved. Motion? Second. Is there any discussion? <coughs> uh, we're all here. All in favor? That's an unanimous. Thank you. Agenda item 5.0 is an adjustments or adjustments to the agenda. I do have one adjustment. Um, in front of, I would like to propose in front of the, let's see, um, in front of continuing business, add a new 8.0, which is a discussion of the um, a school board seat, a, a vacant school board seat, a vacancy. Um, so that would be a new, eight, a new, 9.0, excuse me, and then continuing business would be 10.0. So I have a motion. Is there a second? Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Did you have any further adjustments? No adjustments from me. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Agenda item 6.0, our recognition. 6.1, our retirees. So I'll turn this over to you, Jeff. All right. Um, I just... Uh, it's one of the, the favorite meetings of the year uh, for me and, and for us to just have this opportunity to, to recognize uh, our retirees and our educators, our class of 2024. So before we get to uh, our students on June 9th, we get to recognize um, our wonderful staff uh, who just, I mean, whenever I look at years of service for this list, I'm just struck just by you know, people come to Scarborough and are just become part of this community and and just impact generations of students. And that is just such um, a strength of this district. And we hear it through the budget process every year. We hear it, you know, with, um, um, you know, those of us lucky enough to, to, to lead in this district and to have, have the opportunity to work with um, our students in this community. So uh, I, I'm just always struck by the stories, the camaraderie, the, the years of service, and just the impact that all of you have had on Scarborough and on this community. And i and, um, excited to be able to recognize each of you and just to have uh, some folks speak on your behalf and recognize everyone for their years of service. And then also um, to be able to recognize uh, Colby as well. So that's, that's coming. Um, without further ado, we can get started. So, we need somebody to volunteer to be first. Where are we? Is that going to go in order? Well, I don't know. I like order. Order's good. <laughs> well, I'll go first because I'm close. Yeah. All right. I don't think Gail's second on the list. I don't think Gail's with us. So, you okay. go ahead and then Chris. Chris has got one or two people on. All right. All right. Well, I have the pleasure of being here to talk about Karen Detterding. It's not Dieterding. It's not any of the other ways people mispronounce her name. It's Karen Detterding. She has been a fabulous teacher on the Eight Corners staff for the last 24 years. She and I started at Eight Corners officially together, um, although we both did other things before we determined ourselves as Eight Corners people. So we are, we are together. Colby as well. Congratulations, Colby. Um, and Karen has um, done a lot of things at Eight Corners. She was a multi-age teacher back in the day when there were three grade levels in each classroom. So she had all the kindergartners who were in multi-age for math, which was a terrifying sight, but she handled it beautifully. 
And then she went on to become a multi-age teacher and a second grade teacher. She's been a second grade teacher for a very long time. And now that um, now since we've been graded for the most part, and people have come back to say hello to her just the other day. We had a pizza delivery guy who came for student staff appreciation night, and he said, I haven't been here since I was in second grade. I'm like, who are your teachers? Well, I had Mrs. Detterding. I'm like, come on. <laughs> we went to find Mrs. Detterding, and they, he, she knew exactly who he was. So she's got a long legacy of people out there who can attribute their, their love of learning to her. Um, she's a huge dog rescuer. She's a huge hockey fan, thanks to her grandson. She um, is also secretly a tech whiz, which she probably doesn't want anybody to know, but she's been teaching online for University of New England in their master's program for literacy for many years now. And she was our remote teacher for second grade during COVID. And I think she secretly has all kinds of skills that she keeps very quiet about and doesn't want people to, to know that she's that savvy and smart. Um, she has just done an amazing job. We're gonna miss her dearly. And I know in retirement, she will be going to Disney as often as possible. She'll be traveling in her RV with her husband, Greg. And I'm sure that they will also be figuring out where they're going to go for the next round of hockey games with, to see Jordan. So congratulations, Karen. We will miss you very much. to honor Marsha Grant tonight, who has been with Scarborough for 32 years. Yay. <laughs> uh, so back in the early 90s, Marsha actually taught at all three of our K-2 schools uh, when there were no gyms. So she described to me a time when they were preparing lunch and she was teaching PE in like a lobby area <laughs> where maybe some balls might have been flying into the lunch prep. There are a lot of issues here. <laughs> but yet, Marsha made it work. Um, once we had some gyms when our schools were uh, renovated, she ended up at Blue Point, And that's where she has spent the majority of her career. She has received the Richard Bartlett Award of Excellence for Adaptive PE and the Mayford Elementary PE Teacher of the Year Award in 2012. Those are just two very small examples of her excellence. She is a very special teacher. She has a way of engaging kids um, at their level way beyond the content of PE and health. She has really worked with some very challenging kids and connected with them in ways that PE is the only thing that they really want to do in school and the only place that they are successful. She is a great collaborator. Everybody wor loves working with her. She has participated in countless uh, curriculum development areas over the years and has spearheaded things like 5210. Um, and heart challenges and all of the great things. She's been a great mentor for many new educators. She continues to mentor our, our new PE teachers and can, wants to continue that work once she leaves. Once she's out of here, which has been a very difficult decision for her, she's gonna enjoy doing whatever she wants <laughs> <laughs> with her family. So congratulations, Marsha. I can't even express how deeply you're going to be missed. It's been an honor. It's been great being part of the Scarborough team. I appreciate all your work. It takes 
a team to make this happen, and it's beautiful when it's when it comes together. And I get to be on the end with kids. So, thanks, everybody. <laughs>Kelly Crosby. I'm the principal at Wentworth School. Uh, we have three retirees from Wentworth, um, one of whom could not be here this evening, but I'd like to speak briefly about Heather Ebenhoe. Um, she retired earlier in the school year. <laughs> and there she is. Hi, Heather. Um, so she retired earlier in the school year, and I'm so glad that you could make it this evening. So Heather began um, in the Scarborough Public Schools in 2008 as a kindergarten teacher at Blue Point. She transitioned to a fourth grade teacher position at the old Wentworth School. So she's one of our originals who came over from the old school to our um, wonderful new school. And she made the transition with us as a fifth grade teacher. Prior to her work in Scarborough, she was an in-house author and project designer and assistant editor for a publisher in North <coughs> Carolina, and she has actually authored and published children's books and stories. Following a couple of years in a really crucial remote position through the pandemic, um, most recently at Wentworth, she combined her love of books and her knowledge of technology and her love of kids and teaching and transitioned to a learning commons ed tech position where she could support students learning and exploration in a literacy rich environment. And that was a position that she really, really enjoyed to round out her time with us at Wentworth School. So Heather, as I mentioned, has already begun retirement and her plans are underway, focusing on health and wellness time with family and her dogs, and spending time in nature. So Heather, we wish you the very best. Congratulations. <laughs> all the surprises. Yes. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you for all the support over the years. So, thank you. Okay, next I have another Wentworth original who came over from uh, the old Wentworth to the new Wentworth, is probably identifies as an East Winger for life though, um, and that is Mr. Dave Slotman. Mr. Slotman has been a teacher and a learner his entire life. He has served the Scarborough Public Schools for 24 years. He earned his undergraduate degree in biology from Cornell University. He was a Siemens, Seamanship instructor, a merchant marine midshipman, and was an ESL tutor for refugees from Cambodia, Poland, and Bulgaria. So amazing that when some of our new Mainers arrive, um, one of our very first who spoke only Portuguese and was just by chance placed in Mr. Slotman's class, he speaks Portuguese. <laughs> who knew? <laughs> who knew? Um, he brings his experience as an independent traveler to Asia, Australia, South Pacific, Europe, and North Africa, as well as his work as a carpenter, a cabinet maker, and a boat builder to students in his classroom. In addition to his current role as a thriving and engaging fourth grade teacher, he previously taught in the multi-age program at the Old Wentworth for many years. And as many of you already know, he's also the dedicated director of the Jim Dandy's Children's Circus. <coughs> Mr. Slotman always brings an interesting perspective to any conversation. He's thoughtful, and when he speaks, people listen. Mr. Slotman greets everyone with a smile and a kind word. He ensures all of his students know they are important. He's a dedicated family man, and we know that Mr. Slotman will cherish more time with his loved ones and the opportunity to explore his many passions in retirement. Enjoy your time in retirement, Mr. Slotman, and thank you for all that you've brought to our school.
working with the kids in this community, the other day I stopped and thought, oh my God, my role in the community is going to be really different in mm. about a month. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a little shocking to me. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm not going away. I'll still be involved with Jim Dandies. And I'll see you all around. <laughs> And next, it's my honor to recognize Mrs. Jean Young, who um, is not a fan of being the center of attention, but I'm so glad has joined us this evening. She's also um, identifies as a West Winger for life mm -hmm. and is now um, at the new Wentworth School, which is 10 years old. We still call it new. So she's been a teacher here for 34 years. In 25 of those, um, she has been a classroom teacher at Wentworth School. She attended the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where she earned her undergrad degree in early childhood education. Over her career, she's had many roles as an educator, from substitute teacher to assistant teacher, a kindergarten teacher. Um, in North Carolina before settling into her role as a fifth grade teacher in Scarborough. Mrs. Young is consistently calm, even, and is a true team player. She creates such an inclusive atmosphere in her classroom that makes students want to be a part of it. She treats her students with respect and they respect her in return. Mrs. Young is the kind of person who makes the world a better place by sprinkling a little pixie dust everywhere humbly and without ever expecting anything in return. We know Mrs. Young will enjoy family, music, her friends at book club, and the beauty of free time and relaxation in retirement. Your contributions are so deeply appreciated, Jean, and we miss you the we will miss you and wish you the very best. So I have four people to honor from the middle school, and then Chris Rohde will be honoring even more. Um, and I'm going to go in order of services. I'm Kathy Terrell. I am the principal of the middle school. So first is Karen Rand. Karen Rand was first hired at Scarborough Middle School in 1997. She worked on the Abenaki team for two school years before taking some time off to move to Vermont and raise her young family. She was rehired when she returned to teaching in 2006, and she taught for the next 17 school years. She has had many memorable moments during her 19 years at Scarborough Middle School and remembers how her colleagues helped shape her career as a teacher and as a person. Her team leader those first two years supported her passion for grammar and literature and inspired her love for teaching. Her middle school leadership teacher team, who she worked with, pushed each other to make decisions in the best interest of all students, and that included Kelly Crosby. <laughs> and then lastly, her grade level teammates, whose passion for teaching made a difference in the lives of their students. Student focused, actively engaged, passionate, driven and full of razzmatazz, I had to work that word in, are just a few of the words a colleague used to describe Karen and the impact she has left on both her peers and students. And I will say some of my best memories were when you and I were seventh grade teachers together and we planned some really fun activities during an activity time where our students moved through centers and had to learn the elf skit and learn the Slumdog Millionaire dance just for a couple things. <laughs> that was the best time. So um, retirement offers her the gift of time 
time to travel, time to relax on Lido Beach in Sarasota, and time to spend with family and friends. So thank you, Karen, for all you have done for the SMS community, and congratulations, and enjoy your retirement. to all you retirees. I took a year leave of absence, and the best part is um, being in Scarborough and having your former students see you. I was in Walgreens, and this former student, whom many of you would know, yelled across the store. And I literally think I was like in the candy aisle or in my, you know, in my leggings. <laughs> this is Rand. Why aren't you in school today? <laughs> and I said, oh, I'm taking a, some time off. And she said, oh, it makes me, and she's yelling, makes me so sad. I said, why? She said, well, I'm sad for all the kids who can't get to have you. Aww. And I just went and, like, cried in my car, like, <laughs> with my candy, you know. <laughs> but anyway, um, that's the best part, are the kids in this community. They're so much fun, and, you know, they make every day just the best. So that's truly what I'm missing right now, but they're all around you in the community, so... Luckily, we're surrounded. <laughs> They'll find you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So next is Tracy Stewart. Tracy Stewart began working in Scarborough in 1996, starting out at Wentworth and then moving to the middle school in 2003. Before coming to Scarborough, she graduated from the University of Maine in 1986 and taught for 10 years in Winthrop, Maine. She, but she always had her sights set on Scarborough. Tracy took pride in her work as a teacher and shares that spending 38 years in Maine classrooms has been as rewarding as it has been challenging. I've loved every grade level and subject I taught. One of Tracy's longtime co-workers shared that she has been a respected colleague, mentor, and friend for all of her years at SMS. Her sense of humor, compassion, and willingness to be a voice for all will be greatly missed. Outside of school, Tracy enjoys making many different crafts, especially those involving textiles. She loves woodworking and DIY projects for her home. Tracy will continue these passions in retirement and will work on growing her small business of creating hand-sewn purses, tote bags, and wallets. Thank you, Tracy, for all that you've done for the SMS community, and congratulations on your retirement. <laughs> Long time ago, I was leaving Winthrop, we were moving down to the southern part of the state for my ex-husband's job, and the one place I wanted to be was Scarborough, Maine. I had actually been a part of the GOLD program training for multi-age teaching in about 1990-something, 1, 92, um, and I just had been so impressed with all the staff that were running that program. and. And um, this is just, this is where I wanted to be. And unfortunately, 96 was a year where there was a lot of teachers applying for jobs. So um, I was in the interview, I will never, I don't know if you guys all remember Beth Libby, she was interviewing me and she never let me forget, I, I was basically begging for the job. <laughs> she goes, did you have to brush your knees off as you walked out the door? I did, I did. I said, I really, really, really want to work here. And I got it. So I'm just so pleased and so grateful for all the years that uh, Scarborough has given me. And um, I'm looking forward to my next chapter, for sure. So thank you. Thanks, Chase. <laughs> And next is Suzanne Kenny. She's not here tonight, and she was another person who retired mid-year. Um, Suzanne was hired in 1996 as a K-12 ed tech health aide. 
During her career with Scarborough School, she worked at each of the primary schools, Wentworth, the middle school, and the high school. She supported all of the health services team at one time or another. A colleague shared that Suzanne had a work ethic that was truly unmatched and was the ultimate team player going wherever she was truly was needed and often without being asked. Suzanne was the glue that held the team together. Her organi organi organizational <laughs> skills kept the health services team running smoothly for years. Whether she was providing a listening ear words of encouragement, or tracking down immunization. She worked with a smile on her face. In her retirement, Suzanne plans to spend some well-deserved time traveling with her two sons and granddaughter. She is planning a trip to California to visit her son there this summer. She found herself in Myrtle Beach recently with her mom and sisters. So thank you for Suzanne for all that you've done for our whole district. Okay, and then Mike Murphy. Um, and Tracy, I was thinking he could have very been the one training you on that gold program. So, I remember Joanne Clyde was there. So, Mike's storied career at Scarborough Middle School began in 1987. <clears throat> During his 36 years at SMS, he has had an undeniable impact on countless students and colleagues. Before coming to SMS, he worked in the Gorham School System and at Thornton Academy. At SMS, he has taught nearly all subjects. For the last 10 years, he has been a social studies and math teacher in the sixth grade. The highlight of Mike's career, however, was running a successful multi-age program for 27 years. He cites this as his greatest accomplishment and takes pride in how he helped the growth and success of students in that program. In addition to teaching, Mike has been a successful and decorated coach, including a tenure at Westbrook High School and most recently Daring High School. Mike also coached golf at Scarborough High School, working with many of his former middle school students. One of Mike's colleagues sums up his contribu um, contributions to our community as follows. He has had a tremendous career of instilling the timeless traits and characteristics of hard work dedication and personal personal commitment to both the students and scholar athletes of Scarborough. Outside of school, Mike enjoys playing golf, going to the beach, reading and watching college basketball. Perfect hobbies to take with him into retirement. So thank you Mike for all that you've done for the SMS community and congratulations. Uh, Director of Special Services, and we have eight retirees tonight mm -hmm. from our department. And uh, I did some math, which means the number is probably wrong, but I came <laughs> up with uh, 159 years of experience yeah. for our retirees in our department. So a lot of uh, just tremendous people, a lot of great relationships, and a lot of experience and expertise uh, from the people that we'll be talking about tonight. So I'm going to start with Robin Ashmore. Robin um, has been with us for 23 years. Robin was a uh, uh, graduate of uh, UMO with a minor in math, and that has come in very handy with the work that Robin has done with us. So Robin has been um, a fixture in our middle school social life skills program for about the past 20 years. And um, this program, for those of you who don't know, provides support for some of our students with um, really the most significant needs for emotional you know, and behavioral support. And to be successful in this program, you have to be patient, understanding, resilient, caring, flexible, and a team player. And these are all qualities that Robin brings to work every single day. On a great day, on a really difficult day, Robin is always on an even keel. Um, so Robin has also uh, developed a really um, kind of unique expertise in working with kids um, with some of these challenges in the area of math. And rumor has it, math may not be every student's favorite subject. And uh, Robin has really done an amazing job of making that material engaging for kids, 
drawing them in, and really meeting the needs of each individual kid that, that she works with. Truly, truly remarkable. Um, so, you know, again, Robin's passion for the work and enjoyment of the work is easy to see. Um, and I think she has really felt like a member of the family to us. I really think about that program as having a really family feel to it, and that is part of what makes it such a great program for kids. And Robin, you have been such a key part of that. Uh, so we are really going to miss working with you. However, Robin is planning to come back, I believe, and do some subbing with us. So we'll keep her connected to the program. And I think Robin also planning to spend some time with family as well. So. Uh, Robin, thank you so much for everything, and congratulations. Thank you so much. Um, it's a funny story. I started substituting here as a long-term sub, and job opened up as an tax the next year, and haven't left the program. So. <laughs> Good that, that you're going to come back. Huh? Good that you're going to come back in some yeah. that feels kind of kind of perfect. Yeah. Thank you so much, everybody. All right, thank you, Robin. <laughs> okay, so our next retiree is Eve Ray, and uh, Eve has been with us for 19 years, I think, all at the high school. And Eve is a, a graduate of uh, Barrett College. Am I saying that correct? There we go. Uh, with a BA in theater. Um, so, uh, so like I said, Eve's been with us for about 20 years in the high school academic life skills program, and um, Eve has worked with countless students during this time, um, a number of different special education teachers, different ed techs. Eve has really been a constant in that program for us um, over the years. And you know, one thing that you would see on any visit to the classroom is it's immediately apparent, right, that Eve puts the needs of her kids absolutely first, right? A really unique ability to connect with kids. Um, really, and, and just show her caring, you know, for kids for sure. Um, so Eva's worked with kids in vocational programs, community work experiences, general education classes, taught basic academic skills in the special education classroom as well. Pretty much everything uh, Eve does. And uh, again, the other thing Eva's done a great job with is to work hard to make sure that um, the kids in her program are full members of the high school community and um, are getting the academic and social supports they need. So even in the most challenging situations, Eve, I think of you as someone who's always positive, friendly, welcoming, encouraging, um, and you've been that way the entire time uh, that, you, that I've known you and that you've been with us. Um, she's a great colleague, a great friend, and a mentor to all the staff that, have, that you've worked with as well. So, so Eve is uh, for retirement plans. Rumor has it that you're a member of two meditation groups and uh, that you're looking forward to continuing with those. Uh, apparently, you also have a lot of books to catch up on. And uh, uh, no big travel plans, but looking forward to kind of living your life. So uh, well earned. And Eve, thank you again so much for all of your work here. Thank you. So next we have Dr. Kathy Stieg. <laughs> so Kathy has worked with Scarborough Schools for 25 years. Um, started as an ed tech, I believe, at Wentworth School, and then uh, moved into her current position, which is the functional life skills teacher at the high school, and have been there for over 20 years now, right? So um, a graduate of um, USM initially and got her doctorate from the University of New England not too long ago. So um, what to say about Kathy, right? She has been the cornerstone of our high school functional life skills program you know, for over 20 years. And we hear a lot from families that families move here to Scarborough for those types of programs. And Kathy is one of the big reasons why people do that. 
Uh, it's just, you know, impossible to put into words, at least for me, the number of lives that Kathy has touched with her dedication to the program. Uh, Kathy has created and sustained a program that provides outstanding academic instruction, lots of hands-on opportunities, um, lots of kid opportunities for kids to participate in the community and in fun, you know, fun outings out in the community. Uh, sometimes without me even knowing about it, but you know, that was fine. Um, Kathy uh, really just goes way above and beyond, right? She's created um, some events where kids from other life skills programs come to Scarborough for things like dances, and she's really been integral in pulling that community together and, you know, expanding the social world, right, for the, for the kids that she's worked with. Um, she also st helped start a reverse mainstream um, uh, program at the high school, so kids from general education classes are coming into Kathy's classroom to work with kids, and that's been just fantastic, right, to see. That's been really fabulous. And, um, you know, the other thing about Kathy's program is she has alumni that come back for the event. So if there's a community dance with other programs, we'll see kids that have graduated three, four, five, longer coming back. Um, and it really speaks to, I think, the connection that Kathy has had with both the kids and their families, just a tremendous impact on, on their lives. So Kathy is uh, kind and patient with everybody that she comes into contact with, and you know, someone I would I would describe as, and I think everyone who knows her would agree, truly selfless. Um, always considerate of and looking to put the needs of others before herself. Uh, so for retirement, um, Kathy's not actually retiring until after the summer because we made her promise to come and work our summer program this year. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, other than that, um, we're also looking forward to having her come in and coordinate all the fun events in the classroom without doing any of the paperwork. Um, and uh, looking forward to spending time with your family, a new granddaughter, and uh, maybe getting back out on your motorcycles at some point, possibly, right? So again, Kathy, uh, so much thanks to all the work that you've done here for us. So. All right, so I have 20 other uh, retirees to go through that uh, couldn't make it here tonight. So um, one of those is Barb Strout. Barb is someone who's worked uh, with Eve and with Kathy in our life skills program. She's currently at the middle school. Um, so I'll read what I have for Barb. So Barb has been a key member of our life skills programs at both the high school and the middle school. Uh, Barb is a flexible person with great people skills. Um, she's worked successfully supporting a broad range of students, um, both in school and in the community. Um, she's helped uh, students develop fundamental communication skills so they can communicate their wants and needs with family, friends, and uh, peers. Um, she's done work on core academic skills for students um, and supported students out in the community in job placements, recreational trips, and life skills activities like shopping and cooking, um, and has made a real difference in, in helping students develop the skills they need to be successful, included, and happy, um, not just in school, but as adults as well. Um, Barb has a great rapport with her special education and general education colleagues, and she is someone who people will often reach out to and ask for specifically, right, if they need some help with a student in the classroom. Uh, Bob's, Barb's colleagues would describe her as welcoming, artistic, kind, smart, and a super hard worker. I would agree with all of that for sure. Uh, speaking of which, her retirement plans are to continue working at L.L. Bean, where she's worked for many years as a second job, and uh, taking some additional time for herself. So. Barb Stroud. Uh, Ren Tracy uh, is an ed tech in a resource room at the middle school. She has six years of service with Scarborough Schools. And uh, we've been really fortunate to have Ren working with us. Um, Ren came to us from RSU 14 where she worked and then retired as a school psychologist. So she brought a really um, great range of skill and expertise in education to us in the role as an ed tech. And Ren was very generous with us in sharing all of that expertise with her colleagues and students. Um, Ren has a great insight into what works with kids, um, for kids, both academically and socially. A big part of her work with us here was um, working with kids on reading and writing instruction and um, 
you know, Ren had a really unique ability to, to think about kids and particular programs and what would work for that individual student. Um, and really just brought that expertise with her uh, to work every day. Uh, and Ren finally is a thoughtful, kind, uh, and just great person to work with, a real team player. And for her retirement plans, she plans to spend some time traveling and spending some more time at her cottage. So, Ren. All right, Leah Zuck. Total years of service, 32 years at Scarborough Public Schools. Um, Leah is one of our ESOL teachers at the high school. And um, Leah, uh, she is certainly will be greatly missed by her colleagues, um, her students, and their families. And one thing I think that really um, set Leah apart is the, the time that she took to get to know um, the students that she worked with and the care that she took um, to make sure that they were comfortable and successful and connected um, here at the high school. So a visit to her classroom would find a really inclusive and supporting environment for kids. Um, from a wide variety of backgrounds. And um, she really had uh, you know, the ability to put all that together into a place that really felt comfortable for everybody, no matter where they were coming from. Um, Leah also made close connections with students' families and was an integral support in navigating um, their journey into a new community and a new school. And finally, I would just say for Leah, uh, truly an expert in her field, right? Someone that we've relied upon a lot in terms of her wealth of knowledge and resources around working with multilingual students um, and a resources that you know, other educators at the high school drew upon as well. So uh, for retirement, Leah is going to spend more time with her husband, Richard, who is also a retired Scarborough educator. And she is looking forward to having more time to attend live music concerts and enjoying a proper <laughs> cup of tea. So Leah Zuck. <laughs> And next we have Julia Uritig. Julia is an ed tech at the Blue Point School. She's been with Scarborough Schools for 22 years. Um, and Julia has worked um, both at Pleasant Hill and Blue Point. Um, Julia has an incredible skill set and has worked successfully with really all of our special education programs at K2. Um, highly skilled in teaching core academic skills like reading, writing, and math. Very familiar with specialized programs for kids in those areas. Uh, a wealth of experience working with students who need um, significant teaching and support to help keep themselves regulated in school. Um, and she's also worked with many students in our functional life skills programs who are working on basic communication skills and pre-academic learning. So it's just really unusual to find someone who can do all of those jobs really well um, and is willing to do all those things. So Julia is um, really uh, a flexible uh, thinker, um, has the willingness to do whatever is needed uh, in the best interest of students. And um, you know, we were talking about her a little bit earlier to, uh, this afternoon, but just a great ability to connect with, with some really difficult students. You know, Julia really has a gift for that. Um, so as a coworker, fantastic, right? She's smart, she's funny, she's a hard worker, and she's gonna be greatly missed by the Blue Point team. Um, Julia is looking forward to retirement, but is also planning to come back and work with us on a substitute basis. So Julia Yurtig. All right, and then uh, Gail Carl. So Gail Carl is a resource room teacher at the middle school. Uh, she's been with us in Scarborough schools for 15 years. And um, Gail's worked with students, again, on a wide variety of subjects. In recent years, she's specialized in teaching reading and writing. Um, Gail is calm, even keeled, dependable, has a great sense of humor. And uh, not surprisingly with those qualities, right, she has a great uh, ability to connect with her students. Um, she's been a great colleague to other teachers on her teams at the middle school. Um, and one thing I always thought was remarkable about Gail is she was always open to new ideas and new learning. Um, this past year, in her last year working with us, she helped us pilot two new reading programs, right? So really went above and beyond to, to reach out and do that. Uh, so Gail's got a wealth of knowledge um, that she shared with her students and the team. Um, and again, another, uh, another person that's going to be super hard to replace. So. Gail's looking forward in retirement to spending more time with her kids, reading, traveling, and playing more pickleball. So, <laughs> Gail Carl. <laughs> and that's it. No one's allowed to retire next year, by the way, from uh, the Special Services Department. So, thank you very much.
I have a couple of other people to talk about um, who are not here tonight, but again, we want to make sure that uh, we're recognizing everyone. Uh, the first person is Anne Legage. I see her husband in the audience. Um, Anne Legage uh, worked here in Scarborough for 17 years. She retired this fall. Uh, she started in the district in September of 2006. And during her tenure here, uh, she started as a kitchen worker. And at her time of retirement, she was the kitchen manager at Wentworth School. Um, Anne is a dedicated and tireless staff member. She really took time off for herself. She was always ready to pitch in and help for the greater good. She valued relationships with her colleagues, and she was always really supportive of others. She was extremely conscientious and very detail-oriented. Um, and, and I would describe Anne definitely as one of those unsung heroes here in the district. Most of what Anne did was behind the scenes and probably might not have been easily noticed by others, but regardless, her impact was remarkable. Um, in her retirement, Anne plans to take time for the many things that she's not had time for when she was working as many hours at Wentworth and hopefully not doing too much on Mike's honeydew list. <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations to Anne. And last but not least, we want to recognize Sue Murphy this evening. Uh, Sue Murphy worked in our district uh, for 19 years. She retired at the end of December. Um, she began in the district in March of 2004 and was a bus driver uh, for the 19 years that she spent with us. Uh, she is described as being a very hard worker and over the years, she developed strong relationships with her students and the families that were on her bus route. She was always ready to pitch in to help to get students to and from school safely. Sue also delivered lunches to our outlying schools, to the K-2 schools for us, as well as delivered food to the homes of families in our backpack program. Um, she is definitely already missed in our transportation department. And in her retirement, Sue is taking care of her grandchild as any doting grandmother who is fortunate enough to be able to would. So congratulations and thank you. And that is a total of, if our calculations are correct, 403 years of service walking out the door tonight. That's amazing. That's, that's absolutely incredible. Um, are there any comments? Did, did you say you too? I said no. Oh. <laughs> are there any comments? Thank you so much for all of your hard work and your dedication. That's, this, is, this represents a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge, and a lot of lives touched. So thank you for everything you do. And for those that are returning, we will see you happily in the fall as a substitute. So thank you for that as well. Um, enjoy your retirement. Enjoy your time off. Enjoy your grandbabies and your books and your travels and your, your textiles and your DIY projects. It will, you will all truly be missed. So thank you. All right, and we have one more, if you want to flip the slide. Agenda item 6.2 is our student. We would be remiss. Um, we are not saying goodbye to Colby tonight. He has one more meeting with us, so we'll have another opportunity to, to recognize him. But Colby has been with us for two years now, um, ser serving as our student rep. Um, he started as a junior and um, is completing his senior year. Um, so after his two years, I was joking that he's also a retiree. So after um, his two years with us, he is going to um, go to American University next year to study. 
Um, political science, right? Yeah, political science. So perfect, perfect um, segue for him. I have to say my favorite thing about you, um, outside of, of course, you have a very um, big spot in my heart. Our kids, my son and, and Colby are the same age. And um, I enjoy all your stories, but I, I always enjoy that when there is something going on that the student body wants us to know, you are always right here to tell us about it. And I really, really appreciate that. You've been a really good voice, vocal voice for your, for your fellow students. And even um, if we haven't always been able to get what you needed, you, you are a definite voice and a definite presence for them. And that's going to serve you so well in the future. So thank you. Thank you for being willing to step up when we needed you. Thank you for all you have done. Um, I, I, I think I speak for all of us when we say we've really appreciated our time with you. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Where's the hat? Where's the hat? I guess we just need a quick minute. No. Yeah. I think we should dismiss the I think we're going to take a quick just uh, five, five minute break just to excuse everybody. So we will be right back.
Welcome back. All right, agenda item um, 7.0 is a review of the 2024 school building survey. Um, I'm not going to go over this um, slide by slide. As you can see, there's 53 and um, we don't we don't need to do that. But um, I do just want to point out a couple of highlights. Just as a reminder, this was a survey that was conducted um, to really help uh, the, the school board and the town council develop an understanding of what the community believed to be the guiding principles behind their vote um, at the school building referendum and then what they would support going forward. So um, there, we did um, send out a sample survey. We did exceed our goal. Um, our goal was 600 and we did get in 902 um, res survey results back from the s statistically valid sample. So that was that was exciting. And so this report is about those um, those findings, the 902 st statistically valid sample results. <laughs> um, and this is available just for the public to know. This this full report is available on the school board website and in the. Um, meeting materials it's also available on the um, building site website page as well um, as you go through when you're reading um, if you continue down these are the major findings um, if you keep going if you diane if you could keep going a little bit further to the first graph mm. sorry it's a little bit error almost there Almost, there we are. Okay, so the, yeah, <laughs> the questions um, are all, are represented graphically and represented um, with the questions as well. So um, for you can see from the beginning that it was, ur the first question was, it is urgent and should be the top priority of our town and schools to find a solution to the facility inadequacies at our K-2 schools. So when you're looking at this, um, the way that people answered, it was um, on a scale from strongly agree to strongly disagree. And so these answers exclude those that didn't provide an answer. So the not provided is excluded. So what you can see here is that 33% of the respondents strongly agreed um, with another 29% agreeing that um, it is urgent and should be the top priority of both the town and the school to find a solution. And so as we go through, um, most of these questions, uh, or all the questions will be there graphically represented. Um, we are going to have a, we are still working out the logistics, but we will have a day when um, our consultant comes in and speaks to both us and the town council and then also the um, building advisory committee uh, to really dive into these results. So I'm not going to spend too much time here. I do want to point out one area, um, Diane, if you don't mind going to slide 11. Uh, page 11, yes, excuse me, right here. Um, I just want to point out one discrepancy that we found that has been corrected. Um, an earlier version of this was had gone out that had the discrepancy. The new re uh, report that is posted to the website has been corrected. So if you look at the second question, it says, um, how do you, what is your support for this statement? The statement is keeping neighborhood schools only if it costs less than a consolidated school or even requires the construction of a fourth primary school. Originally, that sentence was misworded in the report that we, we um, received, and that has now been corrected. This is actually the correct verbiage that should be there. So the first question is, um, how strongly do you support keeping neighborhood schools even if it costs more and has a longer construction timeline? The second question is, how strongly do you support keeping the neighborhood schools only if it costs less than a consolidated school? All right. Um, the rest is, again, this report is available online. It's available through this slide deck. And as soon as we have a date um, that works with the consultant, the town council and, and us will we'll have him in to really describe, or really get, dig into these details a little bit more. I know Jillian too is asked to see these broken down, the answers broken down by um, demographics. And so we're waiting to get those back as well, which should hopefully be next week. Hmm. Any questions? All right. Oh, I actually do. I, you, you might have already just said this. Do we know when we're going to get the other chunk, like the non-statistically valid? 
Um, that I don't know. That you, I think he said initially that would take a few more weeks beyond when okay, we got right. these. So I suspect that we would get them. Um, it's closed now, right? Or is it yes? Not? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes, it's a good question. All right. We will carry on. Agenda item 8.0 is general public comment. Is there anybody wishing to make public comment this evening? Is there anybody online? No? Okay, wonderful. I will close public comment. Agenda item, the new 9.0 is um, a board vacancy. Um, I today uh, received a letter from... Um, Carolyn, that I would like to read as soon as I can pull it up. Okay. Dear Scarborough Board of Education, it is with a blend of gratitude and a heavy heart that I resign from my position on the Scarborough Board of Education. Over the past year and a half, it has been an honor to serve alongside you in shaping the educational landscape of our community. However, as I reflect on my time here, I have come to the realization that my personal and professional commitments demand more attention. In light of this, I believe it is in the best interest of the district and its stakeholders that I step down from my role. Please accept my sincerest apologies for the inconvenience of my, my departure will cause. I commit to do all I can to facilitate a smooth transition. Thank you once again for the opportuni opportunity to serve our community in this capacity. Warm regards, Carolyn Gammon. Um, so that letter was dated yesterday, May 15th, so her resignation is, um, is, effective, is effective yesterday. So um, at this point tonight, just to kind of bring the community along as to where we are and what the next steps are, um, we, Jeff, Diane, myself, um, Tom, and Tom and Toady have taken a look at the town charter um, the way that the verbiage is written, um, we are in the whole, I'm going to call it a holding period, those are my words, where we can't hold a special election because we are close to the June <coughs> referendum. We were within a 60-day window. So um, that puts us in a period where we cannot hold a special election. We also are in a period where we can't appoint anybody because you would appoint until somebody until the June. So if you remember with Leanne, when we appointed Leanne, she was here and, you know, she was before the June election, so we could appoint her. So we're not in a window where we can appoint someone either. Um, so what we are waiting on, there's no action item tonight. Next, at the next board meeting, um, we will, as a body, discuss a recommendation because the reality is this sits with town council, their decision as to how to move forward. Um, we can talk through recommendations and we can come up with as a body what we would like to see done and then we could present that to town council who will then vote on our recommendation to accept it or to do something different so carolyn's term um is not up so we're at june 24 it's she's up in june of 26 is when her term is up all right so are there any um, questions any comments So more to come on that. We are all um, sad by this. I, I think everybody on the board um, is, is this is it's a it's a loss for us all. So um, we appreciate I appreciate we all appreciate Carolyn's. Um, oh, we all appreciate um, Carolyn's service um, to the board, to the district and to the community for the past year and a half. Um, okay, so we will, is there, do we have someone wishing to make public comment regarding the vacancy? I've promoted them, so... Um, Manu, you've been promoted, and you, if you want to unmute yourself, you can go ahead and speak. Oh. Did we lose him? Oh, okay. Well, if you come back, we'll, um, we're going to move on into the agenda. If you come back, you, um, we can promote you then. 
All right, the new um, agenda item 10.0 is continuing business. 10.1 is the FY25 school budget. 10.1.1 um, is an act to allocate town council budget amendments of May 15th, 2024. So for this, I will invite Kate up. Good evening, all. I'm really hopeful this is the last time I come and mm -hmm. speak to you for a little while. <laughs> as much as I enjoy it, um, but this is our last budget action that the board needs to take um, before we go to referendum on June 11th. So I will be very brief um, and just give you my usual little spiel and walk through a couple slides and then um, you have a motion. I've given you all a packet just so that you have the motion right in front of you. And um, I'm not sure who's gonna read the motion, but... Uh, We'll get there when we get there, right? Um, so a little recap for those who haven't been um, in my fan club yet and following me on Instagram. <laughs> I, I, I don't really have a budget Instagram account. That would be really lame. That'd be amazing. Um, <laughs> So the budget Happy process birthday, so far, it's, it's been, a, been a long, long time. Um, we're two months in, just about exactly. When we started our workshops on the 18th and 19th of March, the school board and, and leadership council got together and that was the first public site of the budget. We've been through the school board's first reading, the town budget presentation, the town council's first reading, uh, and then the town council and school board finance committees both spent an enormous amount of time going through uh, the town and school budgets and making recommendations for adjustments. The school board voted on May 2nd um, for a revised budget uh, that was put together by the board, the leadership council, and the finance committee, um, which amounted to a reduction of just under $1.1 million between the first reading and the second reading. So this is a picture. Um, again, this stuff is all posted on the website, so for folks who are in my fan club and want to follow along, this is just a recap of what you've seen before. This chart shows you um, the changes from the first reading to the second reading of the school budget. Um, and you can see that by the time of the second reading passed by the school board on May 2nd, we were at a um, bottom line increase in the education budget of 6.36% on expenditures and a tax request to the town, which is the money we're actually asking to raise, of 3.74%. Uh, this is the capital budget. Um, couldn't fit it all onto one slide without smooshing it. So the capital budget is a little bit separate from the operating three operating budgets, but again, this shows you the transition from the first reading uh, to the second reading where we added um, a significant amount of capital reserve funds to bring the ask to the town down to um, a much smaller number in terms of the tax request. And this again was passed by the board on May 2nd. Um, so what's happened since then? Uh, the town council finance committee recommended a further reduction of $285,250 to the education budget. And this was part of a um, conversation back and forth between uh, town and school finance committees to try to get the education budget and the town budget as a whole as low as possible um, to create the lowest possible tax rate for the town of Scarborough in light of this year's revaluation, which is causing some concern about tax increases outside of the budget. So yesterday, last night, the town council voted to accept the town council finance committee's recommendations. So now the board has to take that 285, 250, and put it somewhere into the budget that we just approved on May 2nd. Um, so we have uh, the reduction plan, which was identified um, by school leaders, vetted through the finance committee, brought forward um, to the board. And the budget process worksheet that's linked in here is uh, for the public to be able to access when they get to the slides, all of these things will be posted. But I've given you a document that just has sort of a capsule summary of where the 285,250 is coming from. Uh, short version is 220,250 is coming from the general fund operating budget and 65,000 is coming from the capital budget. So here is from second reading to tonight 
what the town council has amended and the final bottom line on the operating budget is a tax request increase of 3.33%. Um, and then the next slide just shows the same thing for capital budget um, from second reading to the town council's amended budget. Um, the impact on the tax request of the capital budget is only $31,000, so that's a pretty bitsy number. Um, there's no change to adult ed or school nutrition from what we approved on May 2nd. And my last slide is the pitch to the community. Um, your vote does matter. It's really important that the community comes out and supports the school budget because if you don't and we have to try again, then you have to listen to me all summer, which is going to be really boring. So um, I encourage everyone to come out and vote at the high school on June 11th. Um, it's a, a fun and great opportunity. It's a primary um, election and there's a bunch of cool statewide stuff going on as well. So we, we hope for a good turnout. Um, but you can also do early voting and absentee ballots um, actually in the back of this room every day. You can come and vote. Um, and I've included a link here for information about elections and also a link for the school board's um, budget portal, which includes all of this documentation from start to finish. Thank you, Kate. Are there any questions or comments for Kate? I heard I one get snuck in. Happy birthday. <laughs> you know birthday. That, that you guys are my family, so I have to come and spend my birthday with you. Or I think Jeff said something about getting a life earlier, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> or that that was really sad or something. But, Your life uh, is here. Evidently, this is where I belong. You're taking my comments out of context. That's right. <laughs> That's one of my best uh, bits, actually, <laughs> quoting Jeff inaccurately. Well, so, thank you for thank joining you. us on your birthday. I, I've had all kinds day. of good treats, too. Yeah. This is much better than I would have gotten at home. So, <laughs> um, so I don't know who wants to read that motion, but I've got oh. it in everybody's packet. So. Well, we've got a lovely reader on deck who did a wonderful job last week or and two weeks did ago. number practice. Yes, and she's numbers. ready to, to tee it up again for us. Thank yeah. you. Eddie? Move approval to amend the FY25 education budget expenditure as approved at the school board's second reading on May 2nd, 2024, as follows. General fund operating budget. Reduce the general fund operating expenditure budget by $220,250 with reductions made as outlined in the supporting documents. The amended general fund expenditures gross budget will total $65,828,078. The amended general fund net budget will total $56,057,382. Capital improvements budget, reduce expenditure budget by $65,000 as outlined in the supporting documents. Amended capital improvements expenditures gross budget will total $6,158,475. <coughs> amended capital improvements net budget will total $31,000. Note. 585,000 of non-tax revenues added on May 2nd, 2024, authorized to be taken from school capital reserve fund. Thank you so much, that was lovely. Thank you. That was really lovely. That was. Second. Is there any discussion? All right, all in favor? And it's unanimous, thank you. Thank you, Kate. Shannon, can I make one comment? Just, it just occurred yes. to me. I just wanted to shout out the public that have been emailing um, uh -huh. all the support on behalf of our school budget lately. We've gotten a lot of emails, and we get CC'd um, on all the town ones, too. And it's, it's been amazing that we have a lot of people out there really listening and, mm -hmm. and supporting our kids. Yeah, I, I, I want to just tag on to that. There was a, an overwhelming number of people. I, I was so sh surprised last night to hear that, but also that the council was very complimentary of the work that the school has done. Um, and I heard somebody point out that Lewiston just had a failed ref uh, but school budget referendum. Mm -hmm. They had 1,000 out of 21,000 people vote. Mm -hmm. um, so we really, you know, Get out there and tell people. 
Absolutely. Great points, both of you. No, not at all. Those were great points. All right. Agenda item 11.0 is new business. 11.1 is, um, ha, that's why it was out of order. We already did the rev review of the survey. So we'll skip that one because we've already done it. So 11.2 is the superintendent authorization of summer hires. So moved. So, um, Jeff, do you want to explain, or Diane, either one, do you want to explain what this is? It's the only hiring authority that I get. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like the, having uh, the gavel. Right you, get the, you, right, you get the gavel for that opening meeting after the organizational meeting, and then you get to hire people over the summer. So it's just granting the superintendent authority um, to drop contacts and to hire folks over the summer months when the board's not meeting. So this keeps us from um, stymieing the, the process, right, and allows Jeff to go ahead and um, hire in that, and like you said, in our absence. So we're not, he doesn't have to wait for us to approve hires. He can get them in and get them going. Is there anyone? That's wishing, true. What'd she say? <laughs> I'm not going to be here to do that. Yeah. It's Please give more than so. Jeff permission to do yeah, that. It'll also yeah, be might, Diane. <laughs> we might need to extend that. Jeff and Diane permission. <laughs> Um, is there anyone wishing to make public comment? Where did they come from? <laughs> All right, seeing none, um, we have a motion. Do we have a, do I have a motion to approve the superintendent authorization of summer hires? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous, thank you. Um, 11.3 is the first reading of policy BBBDA, board declared vacancy caused by absenteeism. So I will turn this over to Freyla to tee up. It's not a meeting until we go through some policies. That's right. Working through Bs. Um, BBBDA is board declared vacancy caused by absenteeism. It's a fascinating policy that says you have to show up to meetings. Um, and at a certain point, if you fail to show up to meetings, uh, that your board can be declared vacant. This would be consistent with our town charter, most importantly, because that's kind of our governing uh, document. Uh, but it lays out the exact proceedings of that um, if that happens. Um, obviously, it is likely that if this was going to be a policy that we were going to start enforcing, um, we would there would be some interventions before <laughs> before the vacancy is declared. So it, it contemplates an attendance policy, so you have to show up, and if you're not showing up, there will be attempts by the by the board to reach out to ascertain why, um, and also to make sure there's awareness of, of that requirement. Uh, but ultimately, um, if, if there are a number of, of meetings that a, a member or any one of us doesn't show up to without uh, communication in advance, um, we eventually, the board, the seat has to be declared vacant, so this is just, it just requires it so that we can continue doing our business. And that's because we do need a quorum in order to do business. And so if we have constant ab um, absenteeism, is becomes an issue here, which has never been an issue from my memory since I've been here and from before. But if it was an issue, this is, this is the policy we would use to address it. So I encourage you to read it. But um, uh, that's, what it, that's what it is. It's basically modeled off the sample policy with some, um, some uh, changes that are directly related to our town charter. So it's the town charter governs. Thanks, Freyla. I will just add on one extra thing. Um, we talked about under B, the number of absences, because we um, felt if somebody was in a position where they did need time off due to a severe illness or due to caring for someone, that we, we were trying to gauge the time that would be <coughs> where you could, you could leave the, the board, right, and not lose too much, right? And so we landed on se after seven absences. Um, because after that, it felt like perhaps at that point you're getting closer to a full year being being off the board. So um, that's that's where we landed there. All right. Is there anyone wishing to make public comment about this? Seeing none, we will close public comment. Do I have a motion to approve the first reading of policy BBBDA, board declared vacancy caused by absenteeism? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous, thank you. Um, 11.4 is the first reading of policy BCA, board member code of ethics. 
Um, so this lays out uh, a code of ethics that um, has figured actually pretty prominently in our training materials. Um, so it's not none of the material is new. Um, I know that we were trained on it when I came on the board, mm -hmm. and um, it lays out uh, sort of the the behaviors that we all agree to adhere to um, as we move forward. Because individually, we have no authority. Um, power to do anything. Uh, we have our personal opinions, which are important, um, but collectively is the only way we can act. So that's when we're working together, and this just sort of sets up some ground rules um, that we all um, are agreeing to adhere to. Um, they fall in line with our own board operating protocols that we've adopted um, and we review annually. And um, this looks a lot like the sample policy that is put, that was put forward. It's, it's actually pretty similar to our old policy. It's numbered different, and some of the wording has changed, but the driving principles really haven't changed. Um, but, uh, but we hadn't looked at this policy in 22 years, and so it does, it does need a little brush up. So I'm happy to take specific questions. I'm not going to read it to you. It's fairly long. It goes A through R, um, but it's just a number of, of principles. And again, I've, all of these have been part of our training manual um, at our beginning. And when we started with the board, they're in our board binders, if you will. I'm happy to take any questions. All right. Is there anyone wishing to make public comment this evening? Well, I have a question. When, as we review this, um, just thinking ahead for June, mm -hmm. um, when new board members come around, mm -hmm. we should re redo it then, just so that way. You mean like get into an annual review of it? Yeah. Like every every junior thing. I, I just, would just the question if we if we're able to do that. Mm -hmm. I agree. Is there a way to link it to our when we look at our operating protocols because they're very related. Yes. They should be read together if you're going to be consistent because um, they do they talk to each other but they're not identical. I was actually comparing them. Well, and especially since we have new board members, new goals um, as we get through them. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't foresee it changing a whole lot, but I feel like it's something that, that should come up regularly. So we have, I'm just looking at our annual workflow, and we have, um, with the new, uh, the new board member election schedule, we have in September that we will adopt the operate, we will have our board retreat, which is when we will re review the mission, vision, and operating protocols. Um, we also review, do our annual review of the comprehensive health and safety emergency and management plan. Um, we update the wellness policy. So it's kind of like when we're looking at all of that anyway, and then we also adopt those operating protocols in September. So does that feel like a good time to do this too? Or is that, does that feel too late? I feel like, I feel like it's a little late if, if we're going you said September? That is in September. We also have down in J July that we will do board orientation. That's when we select our committees and liaison um, roles. Um, I, I feel like it kind of needs to come in there. there. That. But I could be swayed differently. Can I offer suggestions? Yes. Would it make sense if we put a copy of this in the board orientation binder? Yes. So like we should mm -hmm. absolutely have this in there. As Do we not already have that in there? I think it is I actually, so. but I think we need to make sure it's in there, and then we can review it part of that. And then I then maybe I would like to see it reviewed at the time of the protocols because again I want our protocols consistent with these, um, in order to make sure there's their clarity. They should be driving our protocols. Well, we could um, we could mix both, and we could do both in July. We could just move the operating protocols up from September. That works for me. How does that feel down here? <laughs> okay, so we will. No, no, we can just move that. All right. Okay, so I have, do I have a motion to approve the first reading of policy BCA board member code of ethics? So moved. Second. Uh, for a second, is there any discussion? Any other questions? All right, all in favor? It's unanimous, thank you. 11.5 is the first reading of policy BDA board organizational meeting. 
This is a fairly quick and easy policy. Um, it uh, indicates that right after we have an election, this is actually a perfect segue, I set Jen up for this, that right <laughs> after our election in June, um, uh, that there will, um, it sorts up how we, how we organize ourselves as a board. So we have a chair, we have a vice chair um, when that comes into effect, and then um, sort of how that works. So it's, it's, again, very brief. I'm not gonna read it to you unless you really want me to. But um, it's, it talks about how we set ourselves up to, to do our business. Um, but it just, that, that's why we do it the way we do it, is because of this policy. Um, we did make a lot of changes. Um, we reviewed it. There was, it, it's very similar to the model policy. Um, and it's also taken from, you know, state law. All right. Do I, is there anybody wishing to make public comment on the first reading of policy BDA board organizational meeting? All right, seeing none. Do I have a motion to approve the first reading of policy BDA board organizational meeting? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Perfect, it's unanimous, thank you. Agenda item 11.6 are appointments. 11 points, well, let me just read them all and I'll give it over to you. 11.6.1 are second year probationary professionals. Um, are you going to read them individually? I will. Absolutely. Okay, so let's start with 11.6.1 second year probational, probationary, excuse me, professionals. Okay, so um, the first is our second year probationary professionals. And I'm going to go through uh, this list. Mm -hmm. Yvette Barone, Andrew Dupree, Aaron Lit uh, Litcher, Laurel Rothermel, Britt Sodery, Nicole Schmid, Maria Lowe, Tracy Frederick, Brianna Belafontaine Krupski, I crushed that one, <laughs> Megan Blakemore, Stephen Grindle, Dylan Ney, Ellen Stone Benson, Stacy Wed, Jessica pa um, Paeva, Peter Hill, Abigail Brown, Lorraine Curtis, Jessica Gendro, Nicole Petherbridge, Madison York, Emily Folds, Jennifer Pinkham, Josh King, and Nicole Sear. Perfect, thank you. Did I hit Britt Sonnery? Yes, you did. Okay. You did. All right. Um, is there anyone wishing to make public comment on second year pro probationary professional appointments? All right, seeing none. Do I have a motion to approve the second year probationary professionals as presented? So moved. A second. Is there any discussion? All right, all in favor? That's unanimous, thank you. 11.6.2 is the first year continuing contract professionals. All right, so we'll start with Timothy Lyons, Ann Stelnicki, Dominic Matozzi, Brandy Knapp, Andrea Giddings, Matthew Coleman, Allison Lane, Allison Stankowitz, Andrew Malcolm, Gabriella Joy, Olivia Geekus, John Brennan, Molly Brennerman, Brennerman, Amanda Gerhardt, Emily Hill, Ethan McGill, Alexandra Spark, Emma Dickinson, Barrett Ballinger, Timothy Ebersold, Craig Hansen, Catherine Lyons, Noah Phillips, Rachel Williams, Molly Seisman, Berkeley Nappy, Allison Layton, Stephanie Gray, Ashley Demers, Jessica Barrett, Mara Balboni, Philip Conley, Rhonda Giger, Giger, <laughs> <Jiguer. laughs> Amy LaBelle, Amanda Knowles, and Georgette Stone. Perfect. Thank you. Do I have anybody wishing to That was public? far from perfect. <laughs> public but comment on the first year continuing contract professionals. All right, seeing none, do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous, thank you. 11.6.3 is the middle school English language arts teacher. Okay, Justin Pease has been nominated to fill this position created from a resignation. Mr. Pease received a Bachelor of Arts degree in English and his Master's of Science in Education from the University of Southern Maine. He most recently worked as a high school English teacher, a speech and debate coach, and designed and taught curriculum for ninth grade common core standards after school in New Mexico. He also has taught at Bonnie Eagle Middle School as a middle school language arts teacher. All right. Thank He's you. back from New Mexico. He's back from New Mexico. All right. Um, is there anybody wishing to make public comment? 
Seeing none, is there a motion to approve the middle school English language arts teacher? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? All in favor? It's unanimous, thank you. Agenda item 12.0 is executive session. 12.1 is a motion to go into executive, ses executive session pursuant to one MRSA 4056A for the purpose of discussing the superintendent's annual review to return to public session. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Is there any discussion? Yes. Yes. Um, is there any concern that we need to vote to extend the hours now before we uh, get into this discussion, or do we want to wait and see what happens? I, I think we could probably wait and see what happens. All right. That sounds good. Yeah. Thank you for asking, though. That's a good point. All right. Uh, so we have a motion. We have a first. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Perfect, it's unanimous, thank you.
Yeah. All right. Welcome back, everybody. Welcome back. Um, agenda item 13.0 is adjournment. So without any objection, we will adjourn the meeting at 9, 11 p.m. Thank you so much. Have a good evening. <laughs>